I don't usually preach on Palm Sunday. I was taught at seminary that the gospel readings we hear this day speak for themselves. I often believe that to be true. And as I thought about passing over this Sunday and focusing my homiletical efforts on Good Friday and Easter, I kept being pulled back. Wait, there's a message here. It, it needs some commentary. If you're Episcopalian, you know this story. You know this Sunday. We begin our service with the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Clouds are lining the streets, welcoming a prophet like one whom they had never seen before. The crowds were massive. They were chanting. They were throwing their cloaks and their branches before Jesus. They were enamored with the possibility that the long-awaited Messiah was coming right before them. He was coming into Jerusalem to, to free them, to liberate them, to realize the prophecies from God like the one we heard last week from Jeremiah where it said, I will be their God and they will be my people. But as we all know, this triumphal entry, this moment didn't last. It quickly fleeted away with the crowds only hours later re-emerging. Yet this time, they weren't chanting Hosanna, but rather crucify. Crucify. I've so often looked at this service as an example of how things can quickly change, how quickly mobs can change, how quickly we can change as individuals from blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord to crucify him, crucify him. But this year, the mob feels different than it ever has before. In many ways, it sadly feels more familiar. You see, the problem in today's story, in both the triumphal entry and in the passion, is the idea of the mob. Mob mentality is one of unity. When you look at a mob, they speak with one tongue. They move with one incredible force. They block out all adversaries that would deter their movement. They are one. They are in agreement. They are unified. But here's the truth about mob mentality that I just described, about its unity. It isn't real. Sure, there is real chanting. There their movement, the, the places they go, the territory they take is very real. There are very real people with very real emotions, but a mob is not a person. It is not an individual. The mob mentality, though, would have outsiders believe that all in the mob have one voice, that all their beliefs are the same, and that they should all be seen as and treated the same. I felt the urge to preach this Sunday because I feel like our society is becoming more and more congruent with this mob mentality. Instead of looking at people, at individuals, we tend to look at one another as members of this mob or members of that mob. Throughout this pandemic, two things have happened. We have been separated from one another. In hopes of curtailing a virus, we have been subjugated to isolation from the people that we love, be they family members or church members or co-workers or friends, or even those acquaintances that we would just run into occasionally at the grocery store. And instead, so many of us have been isolated in our homes, watching or reading the news where some individual we never met is informing us about yet another mob breaking into our country, seeking to destroy our traditions, our values, those things that we love. You know them. The mob of people who refuse to wear masks. Or the mob of people who ridicule the people who do wear masks. Or the mob of Democrats breaking down all remnants of capitalism, or the mob of Republicans who would do anything to preserve their wealth, or the mob of black people who want white people to finally get what they deserve, or the mob of straight white men who will stop at nothing until their race or their sexuality or their masculinity is seen not only as superior, but everything else trash beneath it. 
This might sound shocking coming from this, this room, this church, but should it really? Because these are echoes, these are sound bites that are echoed daily in the news, in social media, in the shows, in the movies we watch, and sadly, even now, from our friends and family members. And so I believe it needs to be said here, in this place, if only to say with all the power and authority you see vested in the church, or in my collar, or in this holy institution, that these words, these thoughts about one another, they're not true. These lies that we have been told are not real. I'm not trying to say that there is not racism in this world, that there's not xenophobia in this world, or that there are not true political differences in our country. Those things are real. But the sound bites we are fed from the mob only tell part of the story. And the commentary we receive from our media so often dilutes the complex issues to feed their very own biases. This is the mob mentality. And all it does, and all it will ever do, is breed fear in one another. I say all this on Palm Sunday, the day when we become the fear-based mob, to tell you that the mobs in our life, just like the mobs that we read about today, will lead to death. The ultimate end of any violent, fear-filled mob is to force others to believe in the power behind the mob. And force will always be challenged by force. And it will end not in transformation, but in death. Death of ideas. Death of relationships. Of friendships. Death of possibility. Death of hope. And if, when taken far enough, yes, even true and ultimate death. Even the death of the Messiah. That one who came to save. Today, you and I, we became the mob in this story. And we must all own up to the fact that our sins killed a man, an innocent man. Yet even amidst this great wrong, the story of Jesus will remind us that we do have hope. We do not have to be a part of the mob any longer. You and I, we will travel the rest of this journey together. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Holy Week.